Hi everyone, um, today we are going to look at a example for the beam element by the stiffness matrix method. Uh, this thing that you probably going to know by now, and there are two degree of freedoms are existed in each node. So one is for the vertical and then one is rotational degree of freedom. In terms of numbering for the beam elements, okay, there are various ways, I mean there are two ways. And but in this video we are first going to number the three degree of freedom first. So the first number will be assigned to the rotational degree of freedom for the first node and then second one will be the second node of rotational degree of freedom third. And we are moving on to the constraint one four five six and it will be numbered like that. And each element that is we actually have two elements. Um, each element has got its own local element stiffnesses, and that will be assembled into the global stiffness matrices matrix uh, by assigning uh, right degree of freedoms each. I prepared a MATLAB code, like a written, a really written code, but I'm gonna actually slowly and. Um, Step by step, I'm going to explain to you like what it's done in here. The firstly, we declare the section properties like which is given, and I worked in like a Newton millimeter and mega pascals. Once we declare the section properties, like we are moving on to generating local stiffness matrices. As we know, we have three nodes. And then we have two elements, and then we have two degree of freedom per node. So I specified it in there, and then I use them for creating the global stiffness matrix. And then what KEL store the matrix does um, by using the cell function. Like a cell function is uh, creating the rays of a ray. So we are storing the, the first and the second and so on, like the like local stiffness matrices into the KL store in the right position. And if you are struggling with any the function, like what it looks and the what, or like just go to how, and then search like with that function. And then it comes out with a so extensive explanation with the example. Please make a use of help function of the MATLAB so this is like a way of learning a MATLAB then I declare the length of the spans like a 5000 millimeter and 3000 millimeters then I created it global statistics matrices the zeros is making a matrix with a full of zeros size of the input inside like so we are creating a 6 by 6 global stiffness matrices now and then now made a four loops for creating the each element local stiffness matrices and then it's assigning into the KL store so that I can call it later just a small note here whenever you call like the matrix like array of the cell then you are using the curly bracket instead of the round bracket we normally use it for the normal matrices now we are moving on to assembling the global citizen matrix um, by the right degree of freedom each element has got four degree of freedom so on the left and the right hand side so you are having the first element has Four one five two. And the second one is like a five two six three. So basically, you are calling from the six by six matrix, but you are basically calling four one five two fourth well first like fifth to second row, and then first fourth first like a fifth to second column of the K global matrix. And then you are basically simply adding stiffness metrics just to prevent to override the value when they are just assembling. So like I'm um, just rewriting like a okay, global, the exactly same thing. 
so basically adding from the word it was to the uh, local stiffness metrics. Then we're moving on to assembling the load vector for the system. So I'm creating the zero vector to the six by one for the F and the F zero. The reason being is the force vector is consists of like the two portion. The first portion is a reaction and the second portion is due to the external loading. For the reaction force, you can specify one, two, three degree freedoms are fixed. Like the degree freedoms are constrained, then you have a reaction force, and the external loadings are formed like that. So when you have a look the MATLAB file, so we got a five kilonewton per meter uniformly distributed loadings and 3 kN per meter uniformly distributed loading on the right hand side so your first the vertical degree of freedom is a 4 because of the constraint so it's contributed by the 5 kN per meter half of the resultant force is going into the degree of the freedom 4 the 50 degree of freedom is affected by the 5 and 3 so you must take account of the both left hand side right hand side so it should looking like 5 kN per meter times the length divided by 2 goes into degree of freedom 4 the same amount goes into the 5th one but also Contributed by the 3 kN per meter uniformly distributed loading. As they are directing downward, they must be minus in sign. For the rotational degree of freedom, are referring to this table. So we have a uniformly distributed loading, and your left hand side rotational degree of freedom are negative WL squared of 12 and the right hand side is the positive of like the same magnitude WL squared over 12 so I apply that accordingly and then this is how it looks once the load vector assembly is done so finally we can calculate like a non-displacement by using this equation forces stiffness times by the displacement vector but that force is divided into the free degree of freedom so the force and the specified degree of freedom's force so the displacement as well but for the specified displacements are normally zero unless you have prescribed displacement looking like that or like described as a delta as you would have actually probably known that uh, your stiffness matrix is like subdivided into the four different sub matrices small smaller matrices and it's looking like kff kfs and so on but on the right hand side kfs and the kss are going to be fallen away because of the zero vector which is multiplied by the ds so we usually not actually needed that portion and your kff indices is going to be one two three which is the three degree of freedom um kfs is going to be four to six and then one to three four to six as well that turns our two system of equations which is FF equals KFF times EF and FS equals KSF times EF to get a non-displacement which is a free degree of freedom displacement you can use like the top equation then to get that one you need to actually inverse the KFF matrix times by the FF vector 
once we have like an, the displacement, like all the unknown displacement, we can actually finally calculate out reaction forces. And now I assign KFF to have a the one to three, one to three of the global system matrix and then KSF to have a four, five, six row and the one to three columns. And to solve um, D, the D vector of the one to three rows is the same as KFF inverse, like that is the same as the inverse of KFF times the F vector, but the method lab recommends you to use like the backslash to get an inverse calculation. From that calculation, you got a displacement in millimeters. I checked that they are all right. Then I moved on to calculate the reaction forces where the specified degree of freedoms are. Uh, just like follow the, the equation that I actually showed you, and then the reaction comes out like that and check with the broken and then everything looks okay all right actually that is it and i'm gonna see you in the next video with more generic uh metric lab code for the stiffness matrices method thank you very much